Stay tuned. Ahead, I'll talk with Liz Kleinrock and Caroline Cusen Pritchard about what Jewish looks like. This book for middle grade readers, 8 to 12 years old and older, is an anthology celebrating 36 Jewish heroes. Hi, I'm Dan Skinner, and this is Some Books Considered. Liz Kleinrock is an author, anti-bias, anti-racist educator, consultant, and facilitator for schools, organizations, and companies across the country. She's the author of Start Here, Start Now, a guide to anti-bias and anti-racist work in your school community. And Come and Join Us, 18 holidays celebrated all year long. Caroline Cusen Pritchard has spent her career working across education and everything from teaching third graders to helping develop federal policy. She's the author of Giddy and Kvetch, a tablet magazine best Jewish picture book of 2021, and the picture book Where is Poppy? They join us to discuss the book they co-authored, What Jewish Looks Like. Liz and Caroline, welcome to the Kids Bookshelf. Thank you so much for having us. So Liz, tell us about the origins of this book, you know, why you wanted to write it and how the two of you came together to produce it. Sure. I think it's a wonderful tale of how social media is a tool to be used for really beautiful connections, isn't always a complete dumpster fire on the internet. Um, So I am Korean American. I'm a transracial adoptee and was raised in a Jewish household here in Washington, D.C., And growing up, I was the only person who looked like me at synagogue, in Hebrew school, in Jewish summer camp, um, and was constantly told by other people, you don't look Jewish. Um, And as a child, that was a really hard thing to respond to because I didn't really know what to say besides, well, I am and here I am. And I don't really know what to say beyond that. Um, Clearly in adulthood, I have far better comebacks, but it definitely created a lot of confusion and frustration and made me feel like I did not belong within the Jewish community, that I had to constantly prove that I belonged, that um, I understood the culture, that um, this was something that I had been raised in. And so as I've been an educator and I've seen these really beautiful collections um, like Little Black Leaders or Notable Native Folks that highlight you know, the diversity within a particular community, thought about how amazing it would be if we had a book that highlighted the beauty and the complexity and diversity of the Jewish community globally and from history to today. Um, And so when this concept was formulating in my head, the only person who I wanted to do this with was Caroline. She is an incredible author. Um, She has such a powerful voice when it comes to writing for children. And so I texted her and she said, yes. And here we are today. That's like the the long story short. So this book features 36 and more, actually, uh, people who are that you would call Jewish. But you start out right at the beginning of the book to kind of explain the big questions here and misconceptions about what it means to be Jewish. So tell us a little bit about that section of the book. So, yeah, I feel like this is, um, we needed to start somewhere that helps all readers come from a common ground or a common language. And it's really hard to do for adults to begin with. And so we really wanted to be thoughtful about what are the sorts of questions kids from all backgrounds might carry coming into this conversation. So some of the questions are things like, what is an ethno-religion? That's a big word for grownups, but what's it mean to be a Jewish people are an ethnicity and a religion. I mean, Jews formed before the word religion even existed. So how do we kind of recontextualize what that means to be Jewish? Things like, are Jews a race? Are Jews white? Um, You know, do all Jews practice Judaism in the same way? And each of these answers for Jewish people, we intuitively can understand some of that nuance. And I think increasingly it's harder for folks outside the community to even understand what it means to be Jewish in any sort of way, let alone in these the depthful way we're hoping to get at. So um, we did our best to try and crack open that conversation in a way that helped give enough of an answer, but also elicited more questions that kids could then pursue on their own and with their grownups as well. So you clear up some of those questions, and then you spotlight people who illustrate the diversity within the Jewish community. So tell us about some of those you spotlight. And I know you cover people who uh, you know are contemporary, but also from history as well. I think Caroline and I each have 
folks who we might have gravitated towards throughout our research and writing process. Um, one of the first people who I came across who I knew I really wanted to be in this book is a woman. Uh, her name was Ruby Myers. She was Indian and Jewish. She came from a Baghdadi family, and she was a prominent movie star in India's silent film era. Um, she was absolutely incredible and dynamic and the type of person who I wish I had known about growing up just because I know that I would have seen parts of my own story and identity reflected back, you know, in her life. Um, so folks like her, we even have people, Caroline and I both currently live in the DC area. Um, so we have some local folks as well, such as Michael Twitty, who is an amazing um, black and Jewish chef and author based here in the DC area. Um, his book, Kosher Soul is like one of my favorites as well. Um, and even just in those two examples, seeing the range of who Jewish people are and how we're also kind of still united by our common values. But those are just mine. Caroline, who are your favorites? I have so many. I, when you said who you were initially drawn to, I was realizing one of the folks I initially was, was Jazz Jennings, because we grew up around the same time as Jazz, when um, Jack, excuse the barking in the background, when um, Jazz was on Barbara Walters as a child, sharing about her experience being transgender and coming out and what that was like with a family that really loved and accepted her. Um, and then she went on to write a children's book, just like us, which has become one of the most banned books across the country. And so being able to showcase Jazz and tell her story in a way that was full of empowerment and strength. Um, that was something that I was really excited for us to have the opportunity to do. Now, this book is being marketed as a middle grade book, but it seems like it also could appeal to some older readers as well. Yes, definitely. <laughs> I think that there are things in this book, especially some of those big questions that Caroline spoke about, um, that could really benefit a lot of adults, um, especially adults who might have a lot of assumptions or biases about who Jewish people are or are, are simply just realizing that they have, you know, a lot of awareness gaps about who Jews are and what Jewish people believe and what unites us and also what's different. So certainly targeted for kids, but accessible for people of all ages. And I would even say that, well, yes, for sure, grownups, um, little kids, there's, there's something, there's a tidbit they can chew on, even folks that aren't able to read yet, right? So I have little kids, I've got seven all the way down to a one-year-old and seeing my three-year-old pick up the book and just visually, Iris Gottlieb is our illustrator who has created the most gorgeous dynamic images, portraits and graphics throughout the book and seeing my three-year-old look at the, she was just reading it with my mom yesterday and my mom said, oh, look, who are all these pe uh, people? And she said, oh, they're all Jewish. And mom said, well, what does Jewish look like? And my three-year-old said, it looks like everybody. And the fact that she immediately, in these formative ages, knows that it, it looks like everyone to be Jewish, there's no one way, uh, felt like a real moment. I'm talking with Liz Kleinrock and Caroline Cusen Pritchard about what Jewish looks like. And our conversation continues in a moment. If you're enjoying this discussion, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you know when I post new interviews. And thank you. We talked a little bit about the big questions section of the book, and you begin the book with an author's note, you know, from each of you. And Liz, as you mentioned, you you write in the author's note that you wish you would have had a book like this when you were growing up and how you would have benefited from being able to see yourself in this way. So tell us a little bit more about that and then talk about how the book is organized. Sure. So... I think for the most part in the United States media, there is a very singular narrative and idea of who Jewish people are. Just even looking at Jewish people who are celebrities, who are represented in books and TV shows, um, they tend to be of Ashkenazi ancestry. Um, and so for folks who are might be unfamiliar with that term, um, Jewish people who historically migrated through parts of Eastern Europe and Russia. And so my adoptive family, um, family members are from Russia, Romania, Ukraine, and Poland. Um, um, so Jewish people who have paler light skin, darker curly hair, there's like a very stereotypical image, I think, that many people visualize if they were to be asked, you know, close your eyes and picture like what a Jewish person looks like. Um, and being Korean, I don't fit any of those stereotypes. And so growing up, I think I constantly felt like 
I didn't belong, um, that I was kind of constantly on the defensive in Jewish spaces, having to kind of prepare myself to be questioned, um, preparing myself to have to prove that I was Jewish, that I could read Hebrew, that I followed these customs, that I observed Shabbat every Friday with my family. My family actually kept kosher. My parents still keep kosher. Um, and that is certainly something that people would probably not assume by looking at me. And thinking about like now as an educator, the work of people like Dr. Rudine Sims Bishop and the importance of text and media serving as mirrors and windows. I feel like I had a lot of windows into different types of Jewish experiences and history, but nothing that I could really hold up and see myself reflected or represented. And knowing that for a lot of Jewish kids out there, this might be the first time that they see themselves in a Jewish text, in a Jewish collection, and are just really excited about that possibility. Um, you know, Caroline, you want to talk about how the book is organized? <laughs> I will. I'll say I, it's, I love hearing you speak about your experience as it connects to this book, your experience generally, but I had such an inverted experience of you. I had so many mirrors. I look like, you know, that my family too is Ashkenazi. I, that's how I look. That's how uh, the people that I grew up in my synagogue looked. And so to have a book like this where we can create, you know, an experience for windows for kids that do feel like in Jewish spaces, they are centered constantly, I think is a really rich and important opportunity as well. So we thought about with this diversity of, you know, the Jewish folks that we're centering, like what does bring them all together? Because often in these biography books, they tend to be organized either chronologically or by jobs. And neither of those really resonated as valuable or meaningful for what we were trying to communicate to an audience, to a reader. And Liz came up with the idea of saying like, well, we keep talking about Jewish values. That's the duh. That's the, of course, what unites all of them. Um, and so we wanted to really clarify and hold up what we meant there. So we organized it by six different Jewish values and then thought about while well, of these folks could fit into nearly all of them, what might be the most resonant grouping. So each um, has six different individuals representing each value to really bring to life what that means. And not just that, but we also included a community organization that's working on the ground today to highlight how that value might be manifest. And so we're hoping that a reader can get a sense for folks across time, across geography, and also what might be happening with work on the ground specifically in the United States that they can get involved in or learn from as well. As you were saying that, I was thinking about, Liz, you talked about in your open that even uh, within the Jewish community, you were often asked that question. They say, well, you don't look Jewish. So it sounds like it's not only educational for those who are not Jewish to better understand, but also within the community to appreciate the depth and breadth of all the people who are really part of that community. Yes, very much so. Um, I hope that when certain folks read this book, if they are children, if they are adults, um, that they do I think have a deeper sense of belonging that Jewish can look like so many different things. It can mean so many different things to different people. And regardless of what you look like or your family ancestry, if you're Jewish, then you do belong. There's no one way to be Jewish. <laughs> Well, these stories are also inspirational. It's not just a little profile of, yes, this person is Jewish, but it talks about the significance of their lives and things that they had to overcome and how they've contributed to the world at large. Yes, exactly. I think that's what felt so inspiring every time that we threw ourselves into the research or to the writing and the rewriting and the rewriting of each of these biographies, uh, the strength and the resilience that came through each of these stories was so profound. Um, I, I think about, you know, Doña Gracia Nasi is one of the people I hadn't yet really understood about. And now I feel like I just wish her story was out there everywhere. She was Portuguese. She was a converso, which meant that she was hiding her Jewish identity um, privately with her family and then pretending to be Catholic out in public for their safety. And when the Inquisition came, she, of course, fled and escaped, but then used her resources to create this underground escape network for thousands of Jews to reach safety as well. So the way that she pulled people within her community up and out and then helped preserve their culture and their uh, heritage wherever they landed, whether it was Turkey um, or other safe havens across Europe. I mean, that was such an inspiring story I'd never heard of, which then cracked open my understanding of what it means to be a Sephardic Jew. And for you, Liz, who are some of the people that you found to be especially inspirational? Oof. Um... 
Well, I my bias, I definitely feel, is one for uh, Rabbi Angela Buchdahl, who is the first Korean-American ordained rabbi, and she was also a cantor here in the United States, and she currently leads Central Synagogue, which is the largest Reformed synagogue in New York City, and I've also been very fortunate to have done some work with her in her congregation, which was just such an amazing like fangirl moment for me. Um also the story of a man named August Bondi, who was born in Austria and immigrated to the United States um, around the time of the Civil War. Um, and he became a staunch abolitionist. He even opened his home to participate in the Underground Railroad, um, enlisted in the Union Army in the Civil War when he didn't have to. Um, and throughout this entire book, I think there are so many folks who have been guided by Jewish values in their activism and trying to be change makers and trying to lean into this idea that in Judaism we call tikkun olam, like how do we repair a broken world and what that can mean to so many different people and how they live that value. And just as a personal note, I'm a native Kansan, so learning about Bondi and his connection to, I believe it was Greeley, Kansas, was, was interesting for me. That's the dream reaction. We're hoping readers go, what? And find some connection, some inroad. <laughs> So there's so much more in this book that, that we, we've just scratched the surface, but I hope we've talked enough that it will pique people's interest so they'll want to learn more. What would you say, and this is a question for both of you, what would you say are the key insights that you hope readers of any age might take from this book? There's so many, it's hard to, I think Liz hinted at this earlier, but um, I think it's this idea that we naturally, and it's no fault of our own, it's just the way that we're wired and the way we're socialized, we're so naturally drawn to make assumptions about any group of people. And so, you know, when we think about, Mahalas was talking about Jewish people, what are the assumptions about the way they look, the way they act, how they think? And the more that you sit and kind of bring those biases to light, the more you realize how uninformed so much of them are and how educating ourselves, especially through story, not through this kind of rough, just... Um, type of ideas you might learn in a rote way at school, but really centering ourselves in people and community can help us really deepen our understanding and humanize a group of people. And in this case, we're talking about the Jewish community, and I hope people can feel inspired and curious uh, and hopeful by these stories and then carry that learning to all groups of people beyond just the Jewish community. Yeah, I guess my hope at least within the Jewish community, is for Jewish spaces, if it's synagogues, if it's Hebrew schools, to kind of hold this up as a mirror or a way to think about, is our community really inclusive when we talk about Jewish people? Are we talking about all Jewish people? Or are we just talking about a certain like ethnic like subgroup? of Jewish people. And if we realize that maybe there is a lot of room for improvement there, what are we actually going to do to ensure that Jewish people of different cultural, different multi-ethnic or multi-racial backgrounds feel included, feel welcomed, and have a sense of belonging in these spaces? To learn more, this middle grade book is What Jewish Looks Like. It's by Liz Kleinrock and Caroline Cusen Pritchard. Liz and Caroline, thank you for talking with me today. Thank you so much, Dan. Thanks for having us. If you'd like to purchase What Jewish Looks Like, I've placed a link for you in the description below. If you enjoyed this conversation, please subscribe, like, and click on the bell so you know when I post new interviews. Meanwhile, here are two more interviews you might find interesting. Thanks for watching this edition of the Kids Bookshelf. I'm Dan Skinner. Until next time, keep sharing the gift of reading.